we've made it here to Uptown in Dallas, Texas, and I'm so excited to introduce Lila to you guys. It was one of the most anticipated restaurant openings in Dallas restaurant history, like I said. So we'll be doing an interview today with Viral Rathad, the CEO and co-founder of Gap Concepts, which includes XOXO Dining Room and Mr. X Cocktail Lounge, and now also Lila, as of six months ago. So it's gonna be a real treat today. We're gonna do an interview inside. Let's go check it out. Awesome guys, so I'm here with my new friend, Viral Rathad. Thank you so much, Viral, for having us in Lila today. This is such a beautiful spot. Um, and actually, it's one of my favorites. This is where I spent my birthday back in September, so definitely special to me, and I know it is to you as well. It's been a huge, you know, just a huge blast here in, in Dallas. I mean, it's been all over Instagram, social media. It's been insane, so congratulations. Okay, so I wanna start out, obviously, CEO, co-founder of Gap Concepts. So not only Lila, but that includes XOXO Dining Room, which I feel like if you don't know that in Dallas, Texas, you've been under a rock. I mean, it, that was a huge explosion as well. You've got Mr. X cocktails, but even before that, like you've, that's, this has all been a huge success in the restaurant and hospitality space. But before you were Jay Hilburn, correct? That's right. Okay. Can you, so I guess starting out, you were in more of the menswear space. So tell us a little bit about your journey into entrepreneurship, um, you know, starting out in the menswear space. Sure. So my first company, my first entrepreneurial experience mm -hmm. was Jay Hilbert. It's a custom menswear brand, direct to consumer, very unique and innovative at the time that we started it. Okay. I got a little fortunate career wise. So the company I was with before in financial services mm -hmm. was also a startup. Okay. So at a young age, I got to see the inner workings of starting at a new young company, getting it off the ground and, you know, thinking about how we go to market, how we attract new customers, how we yes. build infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Jay Hilburn, I felt like I had a little bit of preparation. And so that's a lot of fun to start with yes. concept and idea. And I think what has worked well for me is just put myself in the shoes of my consumer. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do to create a great guest experience or customer experience? What are some of the pain points in the market? And how do you develop a product or a service or an experience that makes you unique and, and special and memorable? Absolutely. So backing up a little bit, were you in Dallas for that previous job before? Are you from Dallas area? Yes, I grew up in Dallas. Okay. And I left, left for college okay. in the North. Everybody's got to, yes. Right. So I left for a while and then I first I went back to I went to San Francisco. That was okay. my first job out of school. Cool. Spent a couple of years in California. Never thought I'd come back to Dallas. Uh -huh. Just you know, you thought you leave home <laughs> and you're ready to do something new. And I just happened to be home for the holidays and I started looking around at some companies, found a private equity firm that was based here in Dallas and great experience. You know, and that's mm -hmm. just what brought me back. And again I thought I'd stay for a year or two and then I would leave and yes. I think what's made it special is that I've always had an opportunity to travel a lot. Yes. And so while Dallas is home, I've had a lot of experiences both professionally and personally to visit other cities in the United States, other mm -hmm. visit a lot of countries, and incorporate that international element into all my businesses. Yes, I love it. I love it. So, what did you always know that you were going to go into entrepreneurship, or did you was that like you just happened to have you know your idea and saw a gap in the market and went for it? I think it was probably a little bit of both. I think okay. you know we. At least for me, definitely at a young age, I always had this aspiration of what it's like to own your own business and to be your own boss. Absolutely. That being said, I think there are a few things that I stepped into which worked well for me. One yeah. is my first opportunity out of college was with a very strong investment bank. And so I had an opportunity to go through great training mm -hmm. and be able to learn a lot at a young age. So in addition to just the analytical skills, a lot more of it's about work ethic and about attention to detail and about being held accountable for what you do. Yes. And then <laughs> gave me the opportunity to use those skills into thinking about what it's like to start your own company. Mm -hmm. And so Jay Hilburn, was that, did you have a storefront in Dallas as well? We did not start with a storefront. Okay. What made Jay Hilburn really unique at the time is that we were entirely direct to consumer Okay. and it was through an in-person sales force. Okay. So the idea at the time was very simple. Yes. Right? The idea started with this concept that we had in our minds, which is men don't wear clothes that fit, men don't like shopping, 
and that nice clothes are heavily <laughs> marked up. Yes. So if we could solve those things, we just, you know, we talked to a bunch of our friends, our you know, lawyer friends, business friends, doctors, whoever, and they all said, yes, if you could solve those problems for me, you'd make my life a lot easier. Yes. That's what got the business guy. <laughs> yes, I can absolutely, uh, you know, just think of my husband's own pain points and right. dragging him to the mall or, you know, North Park, wherever. So it's, right. it can be a struggle for sure with the men. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how you took, you know, being in the men's retail space and diving into the restaurant space because that's, um, you know, I guess, I guess I can see where there could be similarities, but everyone, everyone always says that this is one of the hardest spaces to enter into and to maintain, you know, strength in as well. And I, all that I can tell you is that's absolutely true. <laughs> For me, I think one philosophy that's developed in my mind, so I've always enjoyed consumer businesses. Mm -hmm. So for me in that lane, I view it as you always are gonna have a product or a service, and then you have to think about how am I going to deliver that product or service to my customer. Absolutely. So every company needs some form of you know, product development, go-to-market strategy, sales and marketing, yep. operations, finance and accounting. So those are all functions that to some extent are relevant in every business. Yep. Then you have to get smart on your specific product or service. Mm -hmm. So those are skills that I've been able to transition into every company that I've been a part of. Okay. Now for me yeah. personally, when I was in the apparel business, mm -hmm. I started to see that a few apparel brands had started opening hospitality venues. Because okay. it's just a great way to showcase your brand. Right. Because in, in, as building a retail brand, you're always thinking about how do I bring new customers into my brand. Right. And the world's changed. It used to be like you walk through the mall and you look at all the stores and if the window looks good, you walk in, right? Right. Now we're all looking at digital marketing and mm -hmm. different forms of advertising and different ways of acquisition. So I believe hospitality has become a big thing for a lot of apparel operators. Yes. And so thinking that I live here in Dallas, one of the gaps I saw early on, and this was now goes back 15 years, is I felt like there weren't any great cocktail lounges that mm -hmm. still feel upscale and refined, but they're the fun place to go right. after work or after dinner. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I started thinking about. Okay. Now that whole thing snowballed when I met my current business partner. Okay. He had this great property just east of downtown in Dallas and somehow he convinced me that we should do a full service restaurant and paint it pink and that then led to our first concept which was XOXO. Right. And I think what worked really well for us is, again, we identified a gap in the market, which really is, our, the, the name of our company is based on that theme. Right. We felt that women are, a, you know, obviously, a huge demographic, but more importantly, they're a very yes. important demographic over these last five to 10 years. And when you really look at the data, you know, women are earning more, mm -hmm. they are driving a significant amount of consumer spending. But most restaurants have been designed for men by men. Right. So we thought, let's build a venue that women just love, and worst case, if the pink doesn't work, you can just repaint it. Right, right. And instead, it went bonkers. It went bonkers, truly. I mean, even, you know, little towns in, in, in Texas, people will come in from all over the state, I'm sure all over the country and the world, right. just to dine there. And I think that's also the reality that we have to embrace is we are living in a social media and a highly photographed world, right? Absolutely. Every single person now has a camera, and not only just a still camera, but a video camera on their phone. Right. And they want to share. <laughs> so as we think about our hospitality venues, we absolutely want the design and the experience mm -hmm. to be memorable and notable because we know if it is, the guest will take out their phone and take a picture yes. and they'll share it with their friends. Yes. What we've also learned is it's not solely about that is you also have to be really thoughtful about hey, what's, what's the guest experience that I'm trying to deliver mm -hmm. and go even deeper than just what shows up in the picture, which right. means uh, the quality of your food, the quality of your beverage program, the service, and really how do I make you feel? That's what matters, right? right? And so mm -hmm. like for example, we're sitting here at Lila, which is one of our newer concepts, and yes. we wanted to bring this idea of you're, you travel to Europe and you're you know, spending a few days on the coast, the Amalfi Coast at oh, Santorini, yes. or I mean, you've gone to the Caribbean at St. Bart's, and yes. you still want to bring that like elevated, sophisticated dining experience mm -hmm. to the guest, but you still want it to be comfortable and approachable and warm. You don't want it to feel like um, a, a formal, stiff business dinner. Right. You still want to feel like you can dress nicely, but you can still dress comfortably, yet your food's very approachable, yet it's upscale, great ingredients. And so when you leave, you leave with this feeling of, just, I had a really good night with my friends, I enjoyed the food, I yeah. enjoyed the service, and when I want a fun night out, that's where I want to be. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, this is where I spent my 
my birthday this year and I, I absolutely had that experience and we had the best time, had the best food, so. I'm great to, I'm yes, very glad to hear that. Yes, thank you, yes. So now here with Lila, it's been open, what, six months now about. Um, I know you guys are very forward thinking. What are the, the next steps coming up for you know Dallas or, or beyond? So our goal has always been to develop a portfolio of brands which yes. would, then we can grow to multiple cities. Okay. So right now in Dallas we have XOXO Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, we have Lila, we have a few smaller event venues that we use for private events. Yes. We have another project that's in works, it's called Dre's Dallas, mm -hmm. it's a supper club concept. Okay. So it's taking this idea of, you know, again, fine upscale dining, but at bringing a little bit back of, you know, 50s, 60s dinner club environment. Yes. So adding some entertainment, adding some energy, but doing it in a very classy, re refined way. Yeah. And then we've also started our expansion into Houston. Okay. Concept. It's called Postscript. Okay. That will be opening in Houston in just a couple of months. Okay. The idea for Postscript is to take a lot of what what we've learned in terms of again, you know, design, food, service, etc., and also just develop that atmosphere that's fun to go to. Mm -hmm. And for me, what's important is how you develop a venue where it doesn't matter. You could ask multiple guests what they enjoyed. I want someone to say they love the food. I want someone else to say they love the drinks. I want someone else to say they just remember having a good time. Yes. And that's just going to bring them back. So as we keep developing these brands, the vision over these coming years is to take these brands into other cities across the United States. Absolutely. Yeah, I could definitely see this in, you know, Vegas or LA. I mean, you name it. We'd love that. Yes. Be there. <laughs> I will be there for sure. Yes, and we we need to get you set up for Postscript with an ADTV host in, in Houston now too. We'd love to do that. So Viral, can you tell us a little bit about the space that Lila occupies? Because this is I mean, incredible architecture in here and design, and everybody knows this is one of the legendary patio spots of Uptown in Dallas, Texas. Well, that's what really got us interested and excited about this opportunity, mm -hmm. a real estate template. We're on McKinney Avenue in Dallas. Yes. It is a location and a venue mm -hmm. that many Dallas people know, and they've known it for decades. Yes. I remember 20 years ago, coming to some of the concepts that have been here. Mm -hmm. And as you said, what everyone's known it for is the patio space. We have a large yes. patio, it's on a busy street in town. Unfortunately, over the years, the concepts, this location's turned over a little bit and the neighborhood's mm -hmm. changed. So we had the opportunity to think about it. We knew going in that this is not an A-plus location in Dallas anymore. Mm -hmm. However, everyone knows it. Right. And there's an opportunity to bring it back. But to bring it back, you have to do it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to do something that really stands out that's unique and that uh, creates a reason for our guests to travel to an area that they haven't been to maybe in some time. Yes. And we had to first do that through design. We knew absolutely because we have this great patio space on a well traffic street, you have to make, you have to grab attention unlike anyone else. Right. People need to drive by. They need to see something that's new, that's different, that's exciting. Some of the things that we did on the outside, we, you know, we changed the colors, we add great lighting outside, even little things like adding fans that stay on all the time. It just, you, your eyes notice it. Right. You go by that there's movement there's activity and I liken your patio or your storefront your storefront like the makeup counter at a department store yes you want it to be exciting <laughs> and fun and buzzing and that's what gets people's attention when you drive by right and that I think has worked really well for us then when you enter the space we wanted to create a few different experiences inside so first you know, we have our bar and lounge area we wanted you immediately to walk in and you know feel a sense of being transported to a different city yeah we talked about like yes you're on, I'm in Mallorca right now City. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, you need to achieve that through lighting, through music, through really warm tones and really comfortable looking furniture. Then, but also if the guest wants a more casual experience, you can mm -hmm. hang out in the bar and lounge area. If you want the full seated dinner, you can move into the dining room. And again, in this space particularly, less is more. Right. You don't want it to be too ornate. You don't want it to be too decorative. You want it to feel very comfortable, yes. very relaxing. Yeah. Then we also have a private dining room. So we then have a different space where if you want to have a larger group, a more private atmosphere, we can accommodate you there too. Yes, very big for Dallas folks, definitely. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioning you growing up here, you, you mentioned, you know, coming to this space 20 years ago. What does it mean to you now as a, a Dallas, I, I don't, can't even say small business owner because you've definitely grown this to be a huge concept but you know what does it mean to you and to our audience for you to be now a, a huge business owner in in the Dallas Texas area I think there's two things that come up okay. on a purely personal level it's nice to be 
yeah. back in the area that you grew up. Yeah. I have a lot of friends and family here, and thankfully I'm in consumer businesses, so yes. we can offer great experiences and invite your friends and family. It's just, you know, hospitality is all about being hospi hospitable and hosting, and when you can have your friends and family in your venues and, yes. and take care of them, that's probably one of the most rewarding things about this business. Absolutely. Yeah, purely from a business standpoint, I think there are a number of benefits that have, have uh, worked really well for us. One is, you know, Dallas has grown considerably. Mm -hmm. And so it's fun for me to see how much of the city has changed, just the size of the city, the demographics of the city, all the businesses, the cultural impact, the diversity, it's been phenomenal. Absolutely. Uh, secondly, as I'm sure, you know, you are aware, Texas is a very business friendly state. Mm -hmm. And not only is it business friendly, purely from a regulatory standpoint, but also, when COVID hit, mm -hmm. I'm happy that we were here in Dallas. Yes. <laughs> it allowed us to move faster, reopen faster, and it's afforded us a lot of opportunities that I don't believe would have come if we were in a different place. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Vero, thank you so much for you inviting me in today. Here. It's a beautiful space. I mean, it's just been absolutely explosive for Dallas, and we're so glad you're here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming along on our tour today of 4624 Willow Lane in North Dallas and also of Lila New Restaurant in Uptown Dallas. We've enjoyed you coming along today and I hope you've liked the tour and our interviews. We'll see you next time on the American Dream Selling Dallas. Yeah.